Katie, and today I'm gonna to be testing and reviewing the Yeti air fryer oven. Now the cool thing about this is it's on Oprah's favorite things of 2020. So today we'll be seeing how well it works, if the food it makes tastes good, and if this is something you should consider buying yourself. We're really gonna be putting this thing to the test by making some classics. First, I'll try to make fried Oreos, then some buffalo wings, and finally a blooming onion. All right, Oprah, let's see if your favorite things are my favorite things. The box is very heavy. Oh, it's not very heavy. I'm just very weak. The box is a little heavy. It feels hefty. It feels like this, it, it, it was expensive. Heavy things are expensive? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. generally. Cars. Cars. And there's lots to read. It's family size. It has an accessory kit. It's easy to use. We'll find out. This guy comes with a lot to offer. Ooh, look at those mini mitts. Take me a second. I gotta set this on the ground. Don't film this. <laughs> Everything's okay. It's like a little R2-D2. He doesn't do a lot, but he just makes me fried. <laughs> it's sleek. It's pretty. And they've jammed a ton of accessories inside this guy. Bunch of trays, bunch of baskets. Where are the mittens? No, oh, the mittens are inside. I found the mini mittens. It's a lot of accessories. Like, where are you gonna store it all? In general, everything feels like it's made of nice metal and it doesn't feel cheap. Quality seems good. Ooh, there's so many buttons. Pizza, there's just a wings button. Chicken, steak, fish, shrimp, cake. We got all our stuff. I'm gonna have to clean up all of this and then we'll get started on cooking. So to kick things off, I'm gonna make some fried Oreos. They're feel good, they're nostalgic, they're delicious. They're amazing fair food. I'd love to make them at home and not have my whole house smell like fry oil. The recipe I'm making is one I'd use for deep fried Oreos, but I'm gonna air fry them in the Yeti and then we'll see how it compares. So first thing I'll do, I'll mix some milk and an egg. Whisk that together. Always sounds gross. And then I've got a little bit of sugar and some pancake mix. It feels like I have a little buddy here with me. I don't know, I don't feel so alone. Scrape down the sides of the bowl. Now before I coat my Oreos, I'm gonna preheat our air fryer. I'll hit menu to go to manual. Then I'll hit temp timer. We'll go up to 350. And then I'll hit temp timer again. And let's do 10 minutes for preheating. And we'll hit on. And the reason we want a thick batter is because we're not putting this in oil, so we don't want it to just run away. All right, now it's time to dip some Oreos. I got the double stuff kind, because you know, double is better. So I'm just kind of coating this guy in batter. I can't tell you the last time I had a fried Oreo. It's been a long time. And then I'm gonna just set him on this sheet right here. There's no method to this madness. Last guy. This thing is feeling nice and hot. I'm gonna put them inside. Ooh, a light came on. I think I'll just put him in the middle rack. It's a little tight. I'll leave the temp at 350 and I'm gonna set the timer for seven minutes. Why'd it go to zero? I've hit so many buttons to make this work. Why isn't there an Oreo button? All right, okay. And seven minutes from now, we will see if this Yeti can transport us to a magical state fair where all our troubles don't exist. We've got Less than a minute left, and I get to use my mitts. I'm excited to see how it's gonna let me know that it's done. Is it gonna play a song? Is it just gonna be a normal beep? A little underwhelming on the beeping mechanism. <laughs> All right, I guess I'm gonna turn them off. Take these guys out. Oh, okay, interesting. The back two got very brown, not golden brown, it's too dark. And then this front one didn't really get brown at all. So I'm a little disappointed about how uneven the cook was. I'm gonna plate these up and we'll give them a try. Put in the ones I don't like on the bottom. And then I feel like we need to put a little powdered sugar over the top just to give it that fair look. Okay, it's time to give these a try. Mm. Mm. It's not bad. It's a little dry, like it's a little bready. It definitely tastes a little bit like an Oreo wrapped in a pancake. But the Oreo was nice and warm and oozy, like a little melty. I don't feel like I'm at the fair, unfortunately. I feel like I'm at home and I tried to be at the fair. So I have some deep fried Oreos here to compare. These were cooked in 350 degree oil for about four to five minutes. Mm. That's good, but it definitely tastes bad for you. Like I'm tasting the oil. These look better. They remind me more of the fair, but I prefer the taste of the air fried ones actually. And I actually taste the Oreo more. So far, my little Yeti buddy is off to a good start. Next up, buffalo chicken wings. This I think is a very practical test for our air fryer. I feel like when you make wings at home, they're never as crispy as when you get them at a bar or a restaurant. So what I'm really looking for is if we can get that crisp. And I'm also curious about how much time it's gonna take. On here, it says the oven, it takes about 20 to 22 minutes. 
I'm gonna hit this wings button and find out what it says. We've got our wings. I'll spread them out evenly. Now it's time to discover what happens with the wings button. Oh, I guess it's not a button. You hit menu until it goes to wings. Oh, which is gonna air fry them at 400 for 15 minutes. I don't know if the wings button is for frozen wings, but why not? It should be. These wings are pre-cooked, so if it doesn't cook them all the way, it's not gonna be dangerous. So far, my expectation is it could work, and in an air fryer, the air is moving around constantly, so I, I can imagine it cooking it faster. All right, the Yeti is fired up, and we will be back in 15 to see how it did. All right, we have a minute left. They're looking crispy. I believe in this Yeti, and I want Oprah to be right. I have new mitts, because the Yeti mitts, they couldn't handle the heat. All right, it's time to take them out. Here's nothing. <laughs> Wings. Ooh, they look pretty crispy. 15 minutes, that was pretty quick. To finish these off, I'm gonna mix them in the sauce they came with. Even the sounds they're making, I'm feeling optimistic. They're like crispy, they're sizzling, and I'll toss them. I'm gonna play these bar style with some celery, carrots, and a little blue cheese dressing. These are looking great, better than the bar down the street from my house. I cannot wait to give them a try. Mmm, and it's hot all the way through. And do you hear that, Chris? What do you think Oprah makes in here? Comment below on what you think Oprah makes in this machine. I love wings! You get a wing, and you get a Yeti, and you get a Yeti, and you get a Yeti. <laughs> These were crisp, they were warm all the way through, they were fast. Now I'm gonna try some that we baked in the actual oven. And by the way, these oven wings are the same brand, everything is the same, they were just cooked in the oven. All right, let's give it a go. Not as crispy. Taste-wise, they're very similar, but the skin is a lot more chewy. I gotta keep it real with you. It definitely makes a difference on the wings. They're much crispier. Good on you, Yeti, and good on you, Oprah. For my next trick, we are gonna make a bloomin' onion appear in this machine. A bloomin' onion, people! <laughs> I'm calling this a bloomin' onion. You might know it as an awesome blossom. Depends on what restaurants you go to. But this thing is epic, so we're gonna try to bring some of that magic here with the Yeti. So to start, I'm gonna cut into quarters at first. I'm not cutting all the way through because we want it to stay together. And then I'm gonna cut those quarters in half. And then I'm gonna cut those in half until we get about 16 slices. Once you've made all your cuts, you're gonna flip it over and it's gonna bloom like a flower, like a rose. It's a rose that will make you cry, not because it's romantic, because it's an onion. I'm gonna season some flour with a little cayenne pepper, some paprika, some garlic powder, oregano, a little bit of salt, and some pepper. Then you'll whisk that right up. Make sure everything incorporates evenly. Next, I'm going to take two eggs and some milk, and we'll whisk that up together. I think Oprah's definitely been to Outback Steakhouse. I think Oprah's done everything. She's definitely had a bloomin' onion. If she's not, Oprah, hit me up. Let's have a bloomin' onion. So we're gonna take our onion, and we're gonna put it in our flour. I'm gonna do this with my hands. Make sure it all gets covered in flour. The goal is to cover as much of the onion as possible. And then you're gonna knock off the flour. Then I'm gonna set this in our milk mixture and I'm gonna use one hand to do this. This is messy business. So make sure it gets completely covered, all the insides. So I'm gonna bring it back into the flour. I'm just gonna toss it one more time in the flour. And so now the flour is really gonna stick. Hopefully this is gonna give us a nice crispy bloomin' onion. I'm gonna put them in the basket, wash my hands, and then we'll put this baby in. I got this guy preheating. I'm gonna put this guy in, and then I'm gonna set the timer for 20 minutes. <laughs> okay, so anytime I hit the on button, like sometimes it goes and sometimes it just resets to zero. Sometimes the Yeti's got a tude. Oh. We did it, and in 20 minutes, it's gonna be a party. So I've just checked back in on my onion. There's about eight minutes left, and I'm getting a little worried because the flour is just looking like flour, like it's looking super dry. If this was being fried, the oil would have helped crisp up that flour, but right now the flour just looks like caked on and super dry. It's, it doesn't look good. I have a plan. I'm just gonna take some vegetable oil and spray that on all of my flour. The theory here is that the oil is gonna help crisp up the flour as it bakes. So I'm gonna put it back in and we'll let it go for the other eight minutes. Hopefully that helps. Damn it! 
We're going to check back in on this in eight minutes and we'll see what happens. It's almost time. All right, let's take him out. Okay, I definitely think spraying it with a little oil helped. He looks pretty good. He smells delicious. I'm going to go plate him and we'll see how he tastes. What? Okay, I'm gonna do it without the sauce to start. Not great. It's just the, the flour has really caked on it and the tips are a little burnt, so I'm getting burnt and then just like cakey flour. I'm gonna try one dipped in the spicy horseradish dip. See if that makes it better. The answer is no. Let's just compare it to the Outback Steakhouse one. Visually, this is so much better than mine. When you put them together, mine looks really bad. Mine looks like a nightmare, and this one looks like a really fun night out. I think my failure is a combination of things. My cutting wasn't thin enough, but I also think the air fryer doesn't allow it to like open up as it's cooking. You know, when you drop this in like the fryer oil, all the little crevices like open up to the oil, but this one just sat in that chunky flour and it just, <laughs> then it burned on the tips. I'm gonna try the Outback Steakhouse. Hmm, that is a really good time. This is very good. It's crunchy. There's nothing burnt about it. Each piece is covered in a little bit of the batter. I don't know. It, it's just delicious. It's super pluckable. That is with a P. If you look at mine, like when you take a piece out, it's a huge, it's like detaching a finger. This is horrifying. Some things you can't make at home and some things just need to be fried. So for the most part, it did work pretty well. I like the way the Oreos came out. I actually preferred them better to the fried ones. It did a really good job with frozen food. Those wings were excellent. I think it's a great way to level up your frozen food. I think fries would be good, chicken tenders, mozzarella sticks. It just gives you that little extra crisp that's really hard to achieve in the oven. It's rather big, but it doesn't take up too much counter space. It looks sleek. The only issues I ran into were using the control sometimes was a little bit of a hassle and the temperature. And this door gets stuck when you pull it out which I guess is good because it's keeping it airtight in there. Overall, it's not a perfect conversion when it comes to fried food. Like I preferred the taste of the Oreos, but they didn't taste like a fried Oreo. And the Bloomin' Onion definitely didn't work. But a lot of foods will work and taste pretty good. So we spent about $150 on this guy. Would I buy it for myself? Probably not because I really think a lot of what it can do, my oven can do as well. But if somebody is really into getting crispy, crispy, crispy food and maybe cutting back on their calories, this might be the thing for them. Air fryers are super trendy right now. And as far as air fryers go, I think this is a really good one. Is this on my favorite things of 2020 list? Probably not. I'm so sorry, Oprah. Let us know what you guys think in the comments. And if you want to check them out, there's a link below. And thank you guys for watching. Bye. Oh, yes.